in your hands so when they get things fixed and repaired you can say hey look this is what i had you have it i want it back is your personal data safe family records addresses phone numbers we'll squeeze on over to freedomslips.com yes that's www.freedomslips.com click the banner on the home page for the emp proof bullet drive to get the full scoop of everything that we offer so folks keep your data safe for your peace of mind revolution radio freedomslips.com you don't need to expect us we're already here this is the people's war it is our war we are the fighters fight it then fight it with all that is in us and may god defend the right warning warning we gotta stop us they're gonna kill us all see how the trouble you've started be they the government be they industry be they organized labor be they anyone or human beings time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, by all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to win the day to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Revolution Radio of Freedomslips.com, the number one listener supported talk radio station throwing ourselves upon the gears of the machine revolution radio where information never sleeps you call down the thunder well now you've got it right you tell them i'm coming and hell's coming with me you hear hell's coming with me revolution radio extendivite really works just listen to what some people have to say. Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It would just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. It is a wonderful herb. I said, I think I'm on to something here. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... Hi, good morning, and it's Christine Joanna Hart, and welcome to my weekly show, coming in live from Sussex, and it's really red hot at the moment, I've been outside sunbathing, I wish I was there still, it's so gorgeous, and just lapping up the last of the summer, and good morning to everyone over there in America, and hope you're having a, a wonderful morning I have um, a guest for you today and oh dear he's he's I asked him to do a bio and he's done a little bio of um, and it's sound so I can't play it so um, I'm gonna bring him on he's a voodoo practitioner voodoo master and he's from England and somebody else introduced me to him as you know my experiences of I entered the truth movement and you know, on a kind of side of it, you know, you've got David Icke over there um, and you've got Miles Johnson and Kerry Cassidy over there. Um, I did go into the, um, well, firstly, I went into the Fritz Springmeyer Edge, then moved over to uh, Miles Johnson and got a little bit battered around. 
um, by some women around him and got a lot of bad things started happening to me. And, you know, I thought, what the hell's going on? And then somebody tipped me off that it was like witchcraft. So there's a lot of witchcraft around um, Miles and Kerry's side of things. So if you're entering into that as a experiencer and you're going to come out and talk, be prepared to get attacked. Um, Max Spears told me that as soon as he did his first basis, he got attacked. Um, so it does happen. It sort of puts you on a kind of weird radar. Um, and then after a while, I became friends with David Icke and got to know him and his side, which is not connected with that. And they, they don't really have that. So if you're going to come out to somebody, you know, maybe make it Richie Allen um, or not, not really the Miles Johnson, Kerry Cassidy side, because just because they've got that surrounding them. And I was victim to it and I didn't know, you know, really what to do. And then I thought, I know I'm going to have to learn magic myself. And I wasn't, I didn't really know what it was and didn't know where to go. And then I got a penguin book on magic. Um, can't remember the title now. It's just uh, by Penguin. Um, exploring magic through the ages, perhaps. And it was interesting because it had the Bible and magic in the Bible. And I finally understood the Bible. I finally understood Yahweh. And then began to have a relationship with Yahweh. And since then, I haven't really looked back and have my own spiritual practice now um, I've always been psychic but I haven't really <clears throat> excuse me connected with any um, gods so I began to have a relationship with Yahweh and now I feel mostly protected and I do know how to do reversals EA Coetzee came on my show I still remain friendly with him and he taught me how to do reversals so if you um, suspect anybody doing anything of you you kind of um you need a photograph, a mirror, a box, uh, and you do a kind of um, reversal, which um, it just is like a protective mirror around you. Um, somebody mentioned to me about voodoo, and so I thought, oh, that's interesting. Let me have a look over in that direction. And so I'm going to bring this guest on and just see what it's all about, because I'm completely, completely in the ignorance about it. So let's just see what he's all about now i hope i can bring him on oops let me see hello edward hmm. hello edward hi there oh hi edward i know you're called edward like the vampire in twilight <laughs> <laughs> So, How are I was, you? yes, yes, good, good. Welcome to the show. Welcome to my listeners. I was just um, explaining my own um, foray into magic and, you know, entering the truth movement and finding it was awash with with witches and something I'd never really encountered. And I thought, always thought you'd know about that and it'd be people with long, long hair or something wearing lots of love beads and <laughs> they would maybe have a tattoo of it on their arm or something. It's not really like that, is it? No, no, it's not really like that. There, um, there are quite a few these days. What we call, what I call, pop culture witches. So the people that, due to certain TV shows, um, have sort of thought, "Oh, that's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll do that, and I'll get into that." But they're not really into the actual practicing um, of the actual of the actual crafts itself. Um, mm. There are a few out there as well that we call armchair magicians that will read all the. Uh, all the magical texts um, and quote them word for word as, as, as if it's their work, um, but they don't actually do anything. But we actually learn when we practice magic properly that um, in order to gain wisdom, which um, you need to sort of like use a, a mixture of knowledge and experience. So knowledge plus experience provides wisdom, which then helps you develop power and manifest changes in your life, be that for, for the better or not. Yeah, well, it was interesting when I, you know, did come across Truth Movement, some of the people um, were able, well, I found myself having bad luck and, and things like this happening. And then I would hear a whisper of, oh, well, you upset such and such. And, and it was interesting because then I was busy getting smeared by a certain group as, oh, you're a black magician and 
<laughs> I, I wish I was, you know. <laughs> um, you, know, you know this, and you, and so it's it, it was quite crafty um, because while they were oh you 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 pointing the finger, they were busy doing um, stuff to me. But I think in some cases it's people that just have a familiar demon, and then they ask the demon to um, to do stuff because it was working, you know. Well, it depends what craft you practice, and it depends what they have done to you. For example, there are a few different different methods and different methodologies of magical, what we call magical warfare. Um, so there are, like you said, somebody who can um, have a, either a familiar spirit um, or they can have a spirit that they have called to or, or worked with um, and done something called a petition. So that's a payment to said spirit um, to do X, Y, Z horrible thing to, to said person. That is a possibility. But then going on other aspects, there are other possibilities as well. You can do something such as psychic vampirism, where you drain literally the life force energy. So some people refer to the life force energy as chi. Some people refer to it as kundalini. Um, in Vodou, it's known as the Nami. Um, but there's like the basically a universal energy field. Um, you can eat this from somebody. And doing this, make, doing that makes them incredibly, incredibly, incredibly sickly, especially over a retained amount of time. But not only that, it also increases your level of power um, within itself. And people sometimes use a mixture of both. And they will drain somebody first, and then they will drop uh, a curse, a hex, or a jinx on them um, in order to, to have a maximum effect. In fact, one of the business partners on the website that I run, he does a curse called the Curse of Vampiric Degradation. And that's oh. exactly what that is. Um, basically, what he will do to your enemies is drain them dry and then drop a hideous black magic spell flat on top of their head. Um, this is a dual effect. It's kind of like shock and awe. Um, now, depending on what sort of dark magic was used as well depends on whether you can have it removed for example when you're working with haitian voodoo especially if you're using some of the for want of a better term in english terminology hot so petro um but hot spirits um the only person that can remove the work is the person that put it on so for example if somebody was hexed through marionette pierre Sesh, so marionette of the flames um then only the person who petitioned her could get her to stop. Um, so it, it it depends. There's a number of factors and there are a number of different ways. Um, sometimes psychological warfare is implied to make you actually jinx yourself as well, where people will threaten you and say, I'm going to do this to you and I'm going to curse you and stuff, and they'll get in your face and they will start talking trash about you around the internet so it looks like it's working. And what you do then is you psychically attract it yourself through stewing on it. So you sit there and stew on it and worry about it so much, yeah, that especially if it's somebody with abilities that's quite open like yourself, Christy, um, what you actually do then is you say to the universe, hey, 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 I want this, um, which is, do you know those things I sent you, the planetary high magic? Um, I sent you the planetary high magic, the banishing ritual. This banishing ritual will banish all of that from your energy field and like, it will keep it, if you do it daily, it will keep your psychic skills really open, be warned, but it will bounce and banish all this stuff away and the other one the magical armor i gave you um not, not only protects you but makes it quite difficult to find you on on many levels um these are good protections against such things there are other things as well like a person can especially if they're quite open again psychically um can actually force negative energy onto you so it's kind of almost like reverse vampirism because they take all their hate and all their nastiness and everything that deep down inside messes them up and makes them cry and makes them raging. And they basically put it in a ball. And instead of giving you Reiki to make you feel better, they give you hate and they fill you up with it and they fill your chakras up with it. Um, and this also degrades you and causes you to be incredibly sick. And in indeed, if they vampire you first, then they fill you up with the rubbish. So they've not only took your defences down, but they've hit you, and then they petition a the spirit to attack you. You're looking, this could potentially cause lethal illnesses and all sorts of things like that. There are many different degrees of curses. Yes, familiar spirits can be used um, and petitioned and worked with, but also God-level spirits can be petitioned and worked with. And in fact, on that topic, um, black magicians can petition 
Archangel Michael to kill people. Um, they can and have petitioned Archangel Michael to kill people. Um, angels are very, can be very, very warrior-like when they need to be, you see. Um, so it's not just, it's not just necessarily a familiar spirit. It can be of divine consequence, depending on who the caster is and what, what magic they've used. But also the bond they've got with the spirit as well. Um, I, I, I thought that angels are supposed to be good. Ah, well, um, if you think about it, um, if you look, go back towards the, your sort of, the sort of like Christian creation myth, yeah? Uh -huh. Where there were a battle in heaven, yeah? Uh -huh. Is that safe to say there were a battle in heaven? Yeah. yeah. God won, didn't he? Or jo jo sorry, Yahweh won, didn't he? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, who do you think were his soldiers? Oh, yes. So, um, I, I mean, to be honest, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not slurring them. I'm not being horrible or anti-Christian. I'll just put it out there. I have actually, at the beginning of my path, I have actually worked with and petitioned and invoked um, Archangel Raphael to do energy healing with people. So I have worked with angels in a positive way, but it is a fact, and I would be lying to you if I, if I said it wasn't possible, it is a fact and it is possible for Archangel Michael to be able to kill people. I don't think he just does it willy-nilly for anybody. Um, I don't know the process or the invocation to do it myself, um, as I prim primarily work within Haitian Vodou and with other different spirits of a more demonic nature. But it is possible to get angels to, to kill people and attack people. So, so what are, I was just talking to somebody this morning about this, demons, we're all really confused about demons. I mean, what are they really? Well, demons are ancient gods that didn't exactly comply with Yawa or... Um, necessarily follow, follow his regime um so basically these particular gods were become became demonized as false idols some of these gods originally go back to before christianity was a a, ma a major belief system in itself um so some of them are like from as far back as mesopotamian times um but obviously because these particular religions and practices and these particular gods and spirits that we worshipped don't go in line with the um with, with, with necessarily with the belief in uh, in the way that Yahweh wants things uh, they were demonized and later on a magician called Solomon and this is one of the books that was removed from the Bible later on a magician called Solomon um bound some of these um as demons and and now in order to access them we have to go through like invocations evocations and train our psychic senses um, because they were sort of locked away and bound. Um, he did this with certain jinn as well. Um, so certain spirits that were not, that were not subservient to Yahweh were, were bound away from us. Um, so we now have to, like I said, go through magical and ritual processes in order to access these. Um, but demons aren't necessarily evil. Demon, the word demon doesn't even mean um, evil. It means lesser God. Um, so these are actually divine spirits spirits that are divinities themselves they're just not subservient to our um that's that's pretty much all now the spirits i usually work with the low are they're a, a completely different kettle of fish they're not bound by anyone or anywhere the low are can be described as a number of different things um including the laws and forces of nature themselves um they are very primal and tribal and have been around a heck of a long time some of them used to be human and have ascended and some of them were never human and they work through the crossroads so the way between worlds between the spirit world between the um world we are and between between all worlds the crossroads um they they work there they've got what you call a foot in all world worlds which means they can walk with us as we are now and they can go to any sort of spiritual plane these are a completely different kettle of fish are, uh, are the lower themselves. Um, so why would they help humans? But we aren't really humans, are we? We're just, I mean, we don't really know what we are. We're just in a fleshy body, like our little hamster bodies. And when we come out of that, we go back to spirit. But what do we become? Do we become demons or angels or what do we become? 
Well, it, I guess it depends what um, what belief system you subscribe to, if any belief system. Um, myself, the magical path I'm working, I'm not just doing it for a business. The magical path I'm working is I'm trying to work the path of ascension, which is why I'm walking different kinds of magics and working with different kinds of pantheons, because I am trying to ascend. It is a goal of mine. I mean, I might not achieve it in, in this lifetime, but in the voodoo belief, um, if somebody becomes wise enough and strong enough, they can ascend and eventually become deified as a loa. Now, it might take many lifetimes for this to happen, but that'd be a great goal and that'd be a great achievement to happen. I'm not saying I'll ever be able to achieve that, but that's what, what I would like to strive towards. So I'm walking the path towards ascension. Uh, the spirits help us for a number of reasons. The loa themselves were created um, and were basically tasked to look after man and to look after the world. Um, so they help us because they're kind of tasked to, and we petition them and offer them things such as energy, for example, which they which they like to eat, um, and they like things like rum, for example, and things like that. We make offerings in respect to them, um, and it's sort of a trade off um, with those particular spirits. With the demonic spirits, a lot of them are actually big on shining light on things, on giving you knowledge, on wanting you to progress and realize your full spiritual potential. Um, it's not any sort of rebellious, like sort of war situation, like people would have you believe in the TV, would have you believe. All they want to do is help us sort of like progress and, and move forward and realize our full spiritual potential and not stay locked in these these meat sacks that we call bodies on this plane. They want us to, to grow and progress. Um, the jinn, uh, they're, they're, again, they're a different kettle of fish. It depends which faction they're there. So that's a bit too long to go into that. But going back to the low R, the low oh, no, R... it's not too long. Carry on. <laughs> going, Carry back, on. Going, back, going back to the low R, the low R themselves, they're tasked to look after us. They were left here to look after us and they're tasked to look after us. Yes, we do have to petition them to help us and we do have to be open to them and they do have to be open to us. And yes, it, the work that we do with them isn't always free. Like I said, we offer them room, we offer them devotion, we offer them certain things in order to, you know, do, do things for us. But that's that's pretty much why they would help us. Um, the demons just want us to progress. The lower help us because that's what they're here to do. So the demons sound as if they're quite good because they're quite, you know, thought of as bad, aren't they, by it, most people? Yeah, exactly. The only reason they were thought of as bad is because of the whole, if it, back in, back in the Dark Ages, it was because of the whole, if it's not of Yawa, it's of, it's evil, it's nasty, it's horrible type thing. You know, that whole sort of closed-minded, it's our religion or tough shit kind of attitude that the world had. Um, that's the only reason I'd say that they were really demonized because they don't, they, they don't follow Obviously, Yawa, they're not, they're not, they, they, they don't follow him, they don't like sort of go along his teaching and ethos. But then again, there's no like sort of massive like war situation between them. Like, you know, there's not, there's not like armies of Satanists and Christians like, like, like killing each other in the streets and stuff going mad like that or anything like that. There's no sort of like horrible, horribleness. The demons don't come and like take over us and, and make us not us anymore. In fact, every 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 experience I've had working with a demonic entity so far has been positive and has led to positive changes in my life. Whether that was Boone for help with prosperity, whether that was Marbus for help with healing, or whether that was um, times where I've worked with Azazel lately through meditation for certain things. All these things, yeah, all these times were particularly positive. When I did the draconian ritual and I worked with Tiamat, um, that was extremely positive. I left that feeling empowered. Um, and as you can tell by the sound of me, I'm, I'm, I'm not insane. I'm quite clearly not, you know, it's not like the movies. I'm not like possessed or, or, or convulsing or, or vomiting or, or frothing at the mouth or anything like that. I'm quite together. I'm quite calm and quite relaxed. In fact, there's brought me nothing but positive changes in my life. And, um, again, I'll point out, I'll, I'll just shoot a fallacy down as well. Not one point has any spirit, loa, or demonic, or jinn, ever, ever even mentioned anything about wanting anything to do with my soul, or a part of my soul, or all of my soul. It's never come up. They've never gone, oh, yo, to do this, I need you to tell you. So, it's, like I said, it's not like a, a 1980s horror movie. Um, a lot of them, you know, respect, devotion, treat them correctly, give them the correct offerings, you know, pay them the, pay them the respect to find out about them before you approach them. 
and don't just approach them for dumb things either. Um, because some sometimes this is um, a lot of demons fail to appear for people because people are just like, oh, I'm going to approach him because I want some money and I want to see if it works. So you're going in not believing it's going to work to start with, and you're going in with a disrespectful attitude, like give me this kind of attitude, which is wrong anyway. Um, but again, things aren't like the movies. Before you need to get, uh, before you get an, an evocation in a full manifestation, you usually need to train your psychic skills if you don't already have them anyway. Um, so there's a lot of work that needs to be put in to develop a bond and a relationship with such spirits, whether it's a demon or a lower. Um, although they can manifest to you in dreams as well um, I've had a, a few dreams where Loa have manifested to me um, there's a, a voodoo protection that I've got in place called a gad or in Haitian Creole they call it gad um, and basically it's a petition to the spirits to warn you and protect you if anyone has got harmful intent or is doing harmful dark work to you so you have dreams and like the spirit of the guard, in this case, Bagwan Sandy, he'll turn up in his top hat and in, in your dream and he'll basically kind of tell you what's going on. Although I've learned it's not quite as clear and as simple as it seems. He doesn't just turn around and go, oh, John Smith from number blah, 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 blah streets doing black magic on you. Kind of, They kind of talk kind of cryptically and you have to think about it for, for kind of a while. But a guard is a well-known, a well-known voodoo protection. You don't just get warnings in your dreams from them, but you can get gads for different things. It's just the one in that I've got in place is to be warned if I'm um, if any dark magic has been used against me. Um, but there are gads for many things. You can get them, for example, against poisoning. Um, so it's quite common in Haiti um, for rivals to sometimes poison each other. It is quite common. So they'll do a gad against poisoning. So uh, say, for example, if they go around to someone's house and the guy goes, oh, do you want to drink a rum, mate? And they go, oh, yeah. If the rum's been poisoned, it'll mysteriously just fall on the floor and smash. And then that guy will know, don't take a drink here because it's poisoned. Um, so that's a, a voodoo protection called a guard. And that's an example of a, them manifesting in the real world. But they can also manifest and, and talk to you and deal with you in your dreams. So what about serial killers, for instance? I've studied two world famous circus like Brady and Bianchi I met both and I kind of I don't know if I did come to the conclusion that they were possessed by something but when I met them I got the feeling I wasn't meeting a serial I wasn't meeting the one who did it kind of thing and there was a lot of antichrist activity around their both of their crimes actually a lot of symbolism which was antichrist so I always concluded that it was something coming into them. I mean, both had occultic tendencies, both were psychic, um, both had partners that they put under a hip, hip, hypnotic kind of trance um, to lure them in. So what do you think about that? Well, it depends really, because there are two different, there, there, there are two well, there are uh, two distinct possibilities. I mean, I've never known a dim what, what a proper demonic possession from a demonic divinity to be so violent and so negative. But there are spirits that will possess somebody and have malefic intent towards other humans and towards the humans it's possessed. I'm not saying all spirits are good. Um, no, no, not in, in, indeed. There are some that do have malefic intent. Like in voodoo, there are the jab, for example. The jab are psychopathical spirits. They're very, very, very dark, um, and when they possess somebody, they would exactly do pretty much what a serial killer would do. They would just go around killing people and going nuts. When you use one in dark magic and attach it to somebody, it tries to get them to turn on the ones it loves by whispering in their ear and driving them mad and saying stuff to them that's probably not appropriate for me to say on air. But a lot of four-letter word abuse and nasty, obscene things and you know, just just to send them mad until they eventually snap and turn on somebody. So it is possible for spirits to do that. And it is possible to curse somebody, to get a spirit to attach to somebody and make them crazy and get them to do that. Um, and indeed, if people have been using dark magic that don't fully understand it or haven't fully learnt about it properly, maybe through some sort of unstable fascination to begin with, so they haven't done the groundwork, they've just got fascinated with it, then they can open doors that they don't fully know how to close. So they open a door, they do the work with the spirit they want to do, 
they think everything's peachy. They haven't closed the proper door. And then one of the actual spirits that is nasty, such as something similar to a jab or um, a lugalu or something, comes through. And oh, the what? Sorry? Um, a lugalu. Um, I don't know. It's Haitian Creole. It means hungry ghost. It's basically a negative entity that attaches to you to feed off your aura and drive you insane. Um these kind of things do happen and do exist and there are things called intranquil spirits so the spirits of bad people or people that have died in extremely bad ways um or, or like you said uh, executed serial killers when these die these can become intranquil spirits now when you do spirit work if you don't know what you're doing and you're doing dark spirit work and you open a door to a dark place then those particular kinds of spirits intranquil spirits the lubau or hungry ghosts and the um, jab can come through these kind of doors with the spirit you're kind of working with, sort of hide until you've done, and then attach to you and start making you do crazy things and stuff like that. Um, now, these people, these serial killers you mentioned, were they American? Because um, there's well, a lot Ian Brady, of the Moors murderer, he's English, and then the other one is American at the Hillside yeah. Strangler. Yeah, the well. You see, in America as well, um, there's a lot of, I can't think of a better way to tame this, blood-stained land from what happened with the Native Americans. Um, and there's a lot of cursed land, and a lot of their burial grounds were disrespected. And over there, there is quite a nasty, 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 nasty spirit called a skinwalker, which is a vengeful spirit um, of the Native Americans. Um, this basically job is to take revenge on you know, because the graves were desecrated and things like that these spirits are incredibly negative as well and doors don't even have to be open for these things to be about um these are incredibly incredibly negative spirits sometimes can't even be removed by exorcisms um you see negative spirits can be formed from the negative energy of atrocities for example um the japanese have a spirit called an orail um have you seen the film the grudge no. Well, the film of Grudge is about a, a spirit that basically, it's it's a nuts spirit that goes around killing everybody in its path, but it's trying to get to somebody who committed an atrocity against a family with young children. Um, and the idea is, and it's quite the well, the mythos behind it is, when an atro atrocity is committed, the land is stained with blood, and the negativity can be of such a magnitude it can either attract or birth a negative spirit basically seeks out person who committed said atrocity and destroys them and anything in their path um so there are a number of negative spirits that can attach to people that can destroy people and that can turn people insane but i don't think for one minute that one of the demonic divine is direct, direct, directly responsible for possessing and being a serial killer it will have been, a, it, it will, they will have tried to work with one of the demonic divine and not close the doors and properly and attracted something through. And like you said, they were doing mind control on people, which is a negative act. So they were doing dark magic on people. Yeah. So they've done this dark magic on people and they've not known how to close the door properly. And then someone's come through and possessed them potentially and drove them insane. Or they could have just, or the other, or the other possibility is they were just insane anyway. There are a lot of people in the occult that are actually just insane they're not actually accomplished magicians at all they have the books they have the gear they draw the signs they seem to know what they're talking about but they don't have the skills because they're insane they can't focus they can't they can't bring their mind to, to nothing um in order to be able to be successful you have to be able to bring your mind back to nothing empty all the thoughts out of your brain and be able to visualize and create things and manifest things in your own head and psyche and don't think you'd be able to do it at psycho killer level insanity. Yeah, I noticed with both of them, um, and I don't know a lot of people, certainly my listeners, believe in like state monarch mind control and doing experiments on people. And, and both Brady and Bianchi were like orphans, so they weren't really, they didn't really have parents taking care of them. Both went into institutions. And I noticed that both of them, well, they were 25 when they were arrested for their crimes, pretty young, and they had alter personalities, both of them. So I don't know if they were used in these experiments. I mean, possibly, do you know about those state experiments? 
Um, I've heard, I've certainly heard conspiracy theories about state experiments, and mind control is possible. It's possible. Oh. It's possible spiritually in magic, right? I know for a fact it's possible spiritually in magic. So it's, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm saying it's possible. Um, I know mind control is, is, is possible in certain ways. Um, I mean, there's even basic mind control they've been doing to us th for years through marketing and media and yeah. TV. And it's called called subliminal suggestion. It yeah. might not get you to act a certain way, but it's like repeatedly, hey, buy this, 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 and then you end up buying yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. So they've been doing that sort of thing for, for years, and I know that mind control is possible in magic. You can implant thoughts into people's minds psychically you can implant visualizations into people's heads and get them to act in a certain way um, a particular voodoo curse that we can do involving a black doll can send somebody insane and basically what you do is you control their mind to break it down um and you say certain things to the doll um basically the most obscene things you can think of repeatedly for about seven days and it plays repeat in their head now, you don't have to do this particular curse to send somebody insane. It's just this is what people pay for. Um, you do, you can do this particular curse to get somebody to have a constant thought in their mind because that's like what you're doing. Um, you're saying the certain things to the doll repeatedly. Um, so that's, again, a form of mind control. You're kind of brainwashing them using subliminal suggestion. And I'm pretty sure there are chemicals that can make you open to suggestion. Hypnosis itself is a form of mind control as well. I get hypnotic treatment from my business partner to help with some of my uh, some of my anger issues from from things that I that, that I went through when I was younger. Um, and basically, I used to have a trigger where my anger used to flare up, and he has put a hypnotic trigger in my head now that overrides that trigger. And basically, imagine taking a, a, a pot that's about to boil over off the heat; it does that, and it just simmers down. So that's a form of mind control because I don't blow up anymore oh. uh, mind control is certainly possible but i don't i'm not sure i buy into the cons the, like like uh, like some of the conspiracy theories around it but mind control is possible they certainly do do it through the media and through fake news they certainly do try to, get to believe and what to buy and what to wear and where to go and stuff like that so i noticed that darren darren who's that darren is darren brown that guy does the stuff on stage i think he uses voodoo because he can get people to not speak and all sorts of stuff yeah well there's more than more than more than voodoo that can make people not speak i mean you can stop people speaking with simple hypnosis you can just say when i make a certain trigger you're gonna not be able to speak when i make another trigger you're gonna be able to speak again it's possible to do other than just magic but what I'm, what I'm saying is I do believe in the principle of mind control because I know that it's possible through magic. So I'm guessing yeah. it's chemically and technologically as well. I noticed when I was dealing with Bianchi and another um, journalist as well, Chris Berry D, he had the same thing. Um, that When I got to know him and after I'd visited him and I tried to psychometrize him because I can psychometrize, you know, when you touch somebody, you can read them. And he was really cloaked up. I mean, I couldn't access him, not through touching like his glasses when he went to get a drink, not touching his hands, um, not looking into his eyes. I couldn't access him absolutely at all. It was like he was laughing at me. So he's like cloaked up. I think he knew, well, obviously he knows that people come to see him to try and find out why. And um, then when I, after I wrote my book, um on him he was obviously angry about that and i started to get like really really awful thoughts like thoughts i would normally have and almost as if he was trying to like access me and like look out my eyes and it was only a fraction of a second these thoughts but they were absolutely like horrible and i went to and i saw his face then after because i'm psychic so i knew you know okay where's this coming from and I saw it was him. So I went to a priest, Catholic priest. He gave me some bits out of the Bible to read. And it went straight away, you know, through prayer. And when it sort of tried to come again, just pray straight away and then it was gone. So what is that? Was that him doing that or was it his familiar? Well, it could be either or. It could, it could be, it could be either or because the power of prayer itself is extremely powerful. And not just, I'm not just in uh, terming into Christian prayer, and we'll touch on that in just a second. 
Uh, what it could have been doing is cyclically linking to you, and because you're open, um, the more psychically open somebody is, the e easier it is to psychically link to them, unless they know how to close themselves down and are, are aware and are closed and are closed down. Uh, now, if you couldn't link to him, if and he was blocking you, then he's developed a level, at least a level of ability. Um, if he's able to block you a psychic, then he's then he's developed at least a level of ability. So what he was probably aware that you were trying to access him has shut you down, and then has tried to access you later on to to get to get into your head, see what's going on. Maybe even the negativity he was giving you was a form of psychic attack. Maybe it was like I was saying, filling you with negative energy. Uh, now ha the reason prayer resolved this is prayer is powerful for one of two reasons. If he was working through a spirit, um, because of your faith. The spirits you, the spirit you work with, i.e., Yahweh and his angels, will have helped, will have assisted you. Um, for people that serve Yahweh, um, they always say Michael will always come if you call him for people that serve him. So, um, for, for for in that case, if he was working with uh, another entity, then that's potentially what happened. But also, because of your faith, prayer itself is so powerful, especially when you have psychic ability, but especially combined with your faith, that your own will and your own ability and your own belief in it will make it happen anyway. That is pretty much some of the pretext of how magic works itself. Um, prayer is like an incantation. Uh, like I said to you, the one of the original the original versions of the Bible were more like a grimoire than a religious book telling you what to do or believe. The Psalms themselves can be used uh, and are used in Vodou and other magical crafts as magical as as incantations. Uh, even the saint works with a word and some of them correspond with a specific little eye and resonate with their energies. Um, but it depends. I mean, prayer is a very powerful tool. So either your faith in the prayer and your abilities put the right energy out there to stop it and block it or potentially he was working with a spirit and you called the help of the spirits you serve and obviously there we go um that job's a good one either way though it worked you see whether the prayer itself whether you believe prayer itself actually brings a spirit forward or not it, it, it it's still like i said it, it's a way of expressing your will and intention behind your energy and basically putting your energy out there into the universe and giving it a will and an intention and a way to make that change so whether it actually brings the spirit down to help you or not you're still kind of casting a spell with that prayer because you're basically saying in a certain way this is what's happening to me i want it to stop you know in the name of xyz have it stop um Catholics, for example, when they enter their sacred space, they don't know this, but they're doing magic every time they enter their sacred space. You know, when they cross themselves, oh. when they enter their sacred space, say the church, for example, or somewhere, I don't know, that they consider sacred or holy, and they cross themselves. Do you know that's actually invoking the elements? Oh. So that is invoking the elements. Is crossing. Yeah, I, I have a church that when I go to, even though I don't really like Catholics anymore, I do feel stronger. Well, when you invoke the elements, you're basically pulling the elements of nature into your work. Um, Catholics use the, um, they use the King James Bible a lot, so they use the Psalms and they, they, they pray to the saints a lot. Um, so basically what they're doing is kind of a ritual setup. I wrote that the website I gave you, there's a blog called The Power of Prayer. It wasn't one of my popular blogs because my Satanist followers didn't really read it, um, but it actually explains in depth like sort of, a, a rich sort of like a sort of ritual framework and i've used catholics as an example because people can relate to it so they have sort of like a ritual framework before they enter they're usually cleansed and in their best clothes so that's paying respect to the deity and making sure they're cleansed of impurities and to show they're cleansed of impurities that's why they turn up in their best clothes that's a part of ritual framework of any magic not just church but i'm just it's just easy to explain it in terms of church for you when they cross themselves they're invoking the elements People invoke the elements at the beginning of magic rituals. And then the pastor will sort of lead them in a prayer based on whatever message or whatever they want to pray for that day. So they'll do the prayer, they'll do the sort of psalm, they'll do the hymns. And the whole thing's sort of like a ritual structure aimed at yeah. basically asking the spirit they serve, i.e. Yahweh, can you do this for us, please? Or can you bless us, please? And then we'll do this for you. And they even make offerings. What do you think the collection plate is? They're making offerings. I offer lower coins 
some some lower like coins they're making offerings to Yahweh. yeah it goes into the it goes into the church but the church are the people that are serving him and spreading his word but you know they're making offerings to him and not only that the energy expressed in the singing and dancing and joy of the psalms is actually channeled up through the priest to the spirits this is the sort of you know to the spirits they serve whether that's you know the angels the saints whoever they've been praying to that day um so you know that's a ritual framework and that's in every every sort of like that's that's in religion and that's ritual framework and that's actually sort of like ritual framework that's extremely similar if not the same to a lot of magical practices invoking the elements asking your spirit for what you want um making offerings and then celebrating doing a little bit of having fun with the spirit and that if that's the kind if they're inclined to do that in vodou we call it a fet dancing on the veve um which is made on the floor in flower actually puts your energy into the bear bear uh, which helps put the energy out there the magic out oh. do you do you think that after i shit on that serial killer that he put a curse on me i noticed my life got a bit having bad things happen well Whereas usually usually i'm sort of my psychic powers help me to navigate through life i found them a little bit redundant and i found myself just being like a mundane and so i would stumble into things i wouldn't find it easy to get money i would be you know like a mundane do you know what i mean i would say it's more likely he's been attempting to or has been successfully eating your energy um the quite predatory a serial killers usually um the more of a predatory primal instinct than we are in terms of in terms of the way the civilized brain work um so the um with it being predatory rather than thinking i'm i'm going to get her it'd be like thinking if it's if you put you put yourself in the mind of a predator it'd be like thinking i'm going to eat her eat her away slowly i've got sitting here and waste away slowly and she came and tried to get him do you know that it's kind of i'd say it would more likely for that to happen um but it's not possible it is possible if he's like done dark magic it's possible he's done both it's possible he's tried to eat your energy and he's done that to you but that should be over now with the work that we did um that will have finished any dark magic he will have done will be bounced off that mojo mirror and it won't be the same spirit he used it'll be a spirit i work with called baron sandy one of the lords of the dead and if he did send a curse to you baron sandy will turn up with some of the malevolent dead and teach him a lesson shall we say <laughs> thank you yeah it's hard you know when you get to know these people and you go there and you, you don't know like chris berry d when it started happening and um i said to him did you, did you notice anything spooky when you were dealing with him and he said you mean you can get inside your head and i went oh my god he said i did warn you so these often these serial killers they they are like magicians in some kind of way yeah well some 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 of them especially if they've got abilities mm. potentially maybe it's even the abilities that drove them that way or like i says maybe they opened doors they couldn't close and got attached to by spirits that did send them this way because like i said it is in in voodoo for example when i'm paid to do really nasty dark work to somebody a curse to somebody involving horrible spirits like i said and you open those doors where other dark spirits can come through yeah i have to wear surgical gloves because if I get any of the ingredients on my hands, then the spirits can attach to me. And if the spirits then attach to me and I don't cleanse, you start to get, I've had it before, um, I didn't, um, you start to get thoughts in your head. And it's like, it's not, you know it's not you because mm. it's not your voice. And mm. But it's in your head and it'll be like, somebody will be being nice to you, asking you how your day is. And it'll be like, F this guy, F this guy, just bash the head with this. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And as soon as, you, as soon as you cleanse and meditate and sort yourself out, gone that's it you're absolutely fine that's how you know it's not insanity you cleanse sort yourself out it's gone it was one of them um, one of them spirits that's attached to you because you've got the dark work on your hands and that and people that are experienced often curse themselves through trying to curse others a lot um so i'm not i'm you, I'm, I'm you, not you, you, you were saying the ability drove them that way you mean they had a certain psychic ability or they dabbled which either or either really? or Sometimes if you have a certain psychic ability and you don't train it or close it, because there are two, two, basically if you're a medium or a psychic, there are pretty much two ways to deal with it. Close it down or train it, get used to it and work with it and own it. Um, they're the only ways. Um, otherwise, it's going to drive you crazy. Uh, really? Yeah, because if, if, if you, especially if you're a full-blown medium as well, because the dead 
as soon as you can as soon as the spirits know when you can communicate with them properly and stuff like that and they uh, so they know when you're just ignoring them um and if you in in some cases with mediums i've had mediums come to me and ask me to like try and either help them come to terms with it or to help or if we can't come to terms with it close it down because they make a common mistake of basically telling themselves it's not there i'm crazy it's just in my head i'm just imagining it right and the spirit's like i know you can see me i know you can hear me why are you ignoring me and it, they'll get more and more and more annoyed because we're mediums they're attracted to mediums because they, they want to come to mediums to talk to mediums um so it can they can, it can send you it can send you crazy being having having abilities if you don't know how to train them don't know how to protect yourself don't know how to close yourself down if you don't know how to keep yourself cleansed and keep your area cleansed as well having abilities as well if you've gone through a lot of a lot of negativity in your life having psychic abilities you can also manifest your own kind of poltergeist accidentally so all the negative energy all the times you've been hurt upset let down your life's been destroyed it all can manifest into a conscious entity eventually your abilities uh, do you think do you think that sometimes the powers that be don't like people um with powers because i noticed like with ea coetting who's a black magician he he had a terrible childhood i mean i'm psychic and you know other gifts and i had a terrible childhood um and the serial killers were also really badly like sexually abused do you think maybe the powers that we think oh i don't want the minions to have the power and so they kind of track us into bad situations as children i don't think that's the case i think we develop i think through dealing with what we have to deal with because i've had quite a bad past as well i think through dealing with what we've had to deal with love we develop the strength and the ability to be able to do this um i think that we have to you have to in order to do what 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 we do and what certainly what ear coetting and people like myself and curtis joseph and joseph nunn and sasha one of the other ladies who's helping you um what 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 we've all got in common is we've all been through shit before in our past and i think that's what happens i think life has to break us down in order for us to build up a new in the way that we are and in order for us to see through all the societal bullshit and preset and things that are in your way like you can't do this and this isn't real i think we have to be completely broken down to the point where we're destroyed as people to be able to rise from the ashes as such as uh, people with abilities um as phoenixes basically i don't think there's i don't i don't i don't think there's any other way i don't think i don't i think we have to be completely torn down in order to in order to rise everybody i know of, like that's successful in the occult has got at least one story where the life has blown up in a tremendously terrible way um whether that's through abuse whether that's through failed relationships whether that's through other things such as addiction whatever they've all had a story where it's gone boom in the face um and they've had to basically summon the strength of a god to be able to come oh. through it and, and 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 not chuck yourself off that bridge kind of thing and i think yeah. we've all been the, the ones that are successful and powerful we learn to use that to transmute it and turn it into something that goes out there and manifests change in our life rather than letting the negativity of the situation destroy us yeah you're right yeah i've just been through a terrible time oh that's yeah but it's made me stronger i noticed with with brady because i got very fascinated by the morse case and you know i get berated about that sometimes are you into serial killers but i'm not into serial killers. it was a book i read about brady sort of having special powers to appear and disappear and talk to the dead and stuff like that and it kind of fascinated me you know so i think we know deep down don't we that we've got that power and we're sort of drawn to that sort of world of, of 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 spirits and stuff and i read that sorry carry on sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i was just 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 in your defense in your defense there on that i don't understand why anyone would berate you if they've got an understanding of the occult because if you break it down logically appear and disappear right so okay i can't just click my fingers now and disappear and appear again yeah but yeah. you can go into deep meditation and astrally project and those that are advanced enough can sometimes be perceived and seen by people with abilities and consider this just as a premise consider this 
So for somebody to be able to be perceived as a, a, as appearing and disappearing, all they've got to do is actually project, be seen by somebody, with, noticed by somebody with abilities, think, shit, I've been seen, and then do one. And then they've just appeared and disappeared, haven't they? Mm, but it's, mm. it's, not like, it's not like they were actually physically there and then not physically there, but they can be there astrally. Because you can separate your astral self to your spirit from your body, and you can project somewhere else astrally. So that's appear and disappear. And what what was what was what was the other thing? That, um, yeah, he 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 said that he um, saw Brady said he saw a face of death by seeing a well, green. Communicate with the dead. Yeah, really well, every black magician I know can communicate with the dead. It's called necromancy. Mm. Today is Saturday, which is the day of Bawon Samdi. Bawon Samdi is one of the lords of the dead. Some of the dark work I do, if I do it on on a Saturday is done by communicating with the dead. So those things are not, if you look at it through the a magician's eyes, those things are not impossible. Because to appear and disappear, you can do that astrally. Um, and to communicate with the dead, anybody that has a, a at least an adept working knowledge of black magic can communicate with at least a spirit, if not a divine spirit. Yeah, and he offered these, he said he offered sacrifices to this unformed green face he saw in front of him. So that must have been some kind of possessing spirit or something, or just some kind of spirit that sucked him in, maybe malevolent, that he thought he was going to... Yes, that's very, 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 very possible, very possible. Um, you see, in Voodoo, they have the Jab, so, the, so these are dark spirits, I like to call the Jab. Sometimes they pretend to be the low ass, they pretend to be the, the voodoo gods and they'll say, oh, do this for me and, and, and stuff. And they'll basically try and get you to do messed up stuff for them to say, oh, but, I, but I'm this god and if you don't do this for me, I'll be angry with you. If you do do this for me, I'll give you this kind of thing. Um, and I guess some people, especially if they've got nothing in their life and they're already a bit over the edge and stuff, they're going to potentially latch to this idea and do Maybe you know, you know you know the whole sort of like fantasy kind of thing take over, didn't they? But it is possible for spirits to exploit that and take advantage of that. And spirits we'll do right masquerade as white, white, and blue, dark spirits. Even dead folk sometimes masquerade as other spirits in order to try and get people to do things. Um, Hello, my name is Mr. Rowe. Like I, said, I am the host of Reality uh, Extraction. Revolution Radio at Primesoft.com. I utilize uh, logic, uh, intellect, and uh, magic can be, to methodically can be autonomize, violent, vivisect, and analyze, and analyze and examine, and study, and scrutinize, and extract. Yeah, and yeah, essence of reality yeah, from well, the fog well, of well, illusion well, and well, confusion. Well, you, you can say, find oh, me on like Studio B every Thursday at 1700 hours Pacific Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. No topic taboo, no subject too strange. I strive to take a neutral standpoint during the dissection of the topic. Like at hand, and that's reality extraction with Mr. Rowe on Revolution Radio. What is that? But then if you look at it spiritually, you can see it's somebody just driving somebody, you know. Well, it's, it's the a spiritual reality. element, isn't it, though, to it? Well, this is Thomas, home, a.k.a. a mad painter. painter. I'd like you to join me Monday uh, nights, like 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Open Canvas. Um, Don't forget to bring an open mind. Demons, yes, um, folks, that's right. Bring an open mind to an open canvas. canvas. Again, and that is Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. UFOs to go to corruption. This is Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're all here. Oh, one Sorry, Edward, we we're just going to break. Can you mute your, your mic and just take a three minute break and then just listen in and, and we'll be back in three minutes. So just playing the advert. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, so you're we're in a narco syndicalist commune. We take it in turns to act as a sort of executive officer for the week. Yes. But all the decisions of that officer have to be ratified at a special bi weekly meeting. Yes, I see. By a civil majority in the case of purely internal affairs. Be quiet. But by a two thirds majority in the case of more be quiet. I order you to be quiet. Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Look, it's just a flesh wound. I don't believe I've seen such a display of courage, skill, nerve, grace, and stupidity. I'll do you for that. Oh, what? Come here. What are you going to do, bleed on me? I'm invincible. 
You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs. Roundtable Live, Monday through Friday, 1 a.m. till 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Bring your mind, bring your ideas, bring your voice. King Arthur had nothing on us. Here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Extendivite really works. Just listen to what some people have to say. Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It would just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. It is a wonderful herb. I said, I think I'm on to something here. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendovite. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... So Edward, are you still there? Yep, yep, yep. So oh, uh, okay, I think uh, I think the adverts have stopped now. So um, yeah, we probably have. Uh, great, we can carry on. So so um, where did we get to? We were yeah, we were talking about the serial killers. What I noticed when when I was a child, becoming interested in them, that I always thought there was this kind of spiritual element. And sometimes the police said, "Is there black magic involved in this?" Do you think because there is all that kind of, you know, weird activity, um, like Brady burying his victims face downwards and shaking his fist at the sky. And there's always that kind of thing. And with Bianchi, there was a kind of thing. So I always wanted to kind of explain that, but I never, because I didn't know much about magic, I couldn't explain it, you know? Well, um, human sacrifice is a very touchy subject, spiritually. Um, in the case of a lot of cases, a lot of times it's just people that are quite, to be honest with you, insane. Um, and the spirits don't advocate it, they certainly don't ask for it, and it's not compulsory in any path working I have ever seen or read. That being said, in some of the really, really, really dark stuff, um, it is potentially possible to sell people to spirits. Um, it is potentially possible to, and uh, for example, some dark places in Haiti, you can uh, sometimes if you're a hot, if you're a really bad person, such as somebody who messes with kids or or someone like that, sometimes the village will grab you and take you to a book or and they will sell you to a job. I don't know if that involves you being killed or not, because I do know quite a bit about about voodoo. Um, but there is some stuff that they that, that, that they even keep secret from me. Um, so I don't know how this happens, but I know it is possible to sell people to spirits. I know it is possible to sell somebody's life force energy to them. And I'm guessing it is possible to sacrifice somebody and sacrifice somebody and sell them to them. But a lot of the time, and I mean 99.9% .9 of the time it's happened, it's just insane people thinking that's how they get in Satan's good books. You see, unfortunately, the craft, because it has been demonized and seen as negative, attracts people who are crazy and think that in order to be in the good books of the demons, they have to be as nasty and as evil as possible. And this isn't true. Hate is heavy and is no way, is no way to nip to ascend. If you're full of hate and nastiness, then you can't ascend, whether you're religious or not. Your hate is heavy. Um, you need to not be killing people in the name of demons. A lot of them don't take kindly to being portrayed as evil, 
shall we say. Um, it's just people get it twisted in the mind and go crazy. And that being said, like I said, there are psychotic spirits, like I said, the really dark ones, such as the Jab, that are nothing to do with the demonic divine and are nothing to do with certain law. Um, but, the, you know, you can sell people to, but certainly when people say, oh, they, they killed him in the name of Satan, well, I don't think that Satan himself would particularly appreciate such a sacrifice um like i said it's nowhere to ascend and and hate is heavy lucifer wouldn't appreciate it. it's nowhere to ascend like i says hate itself is heavy and murder itself is a very hateful act yeah i think people think i'm trying to stick up for serial killers when i say i think it was something coming through them but actually just after meeting them you oh it's possible it's possible that they could have believed that that would have got them in the good books of xyz spirit so they thought oh what higher sacrifice than a human being Do you know i could see yeah. the thought thing and i can see the the process but it's insane um cer certain spirits actually have specific animals that they would prefer in in, in instead of any other being um like i, I wonder i wonder if it was any spirit then i mean i always think it was something well, he might have just thought, he might have just thought, if I do this in the name of this spirit, it's going to think, wow, I've killed these people. And do you know what I mean? And it could have been oh. part of the insane fantasies part of it. But yeah. for example, any other, if you went through my friends list yet, every one of those people there, even the people that are back, well, I know it's swarming, sorry, even the people that are completely mad and have got the magical power of a stick, not one of them has ever done anything like that. And the people that are really successful, not one of them has ever, ever, ever done a human sacrifice or, or murdered anyone. And there's one man, there was one man on my friends list, a, a Haitian bokor, right? He, he has got to be one of the best bokors in the world, yeah, right? And he hadn't even done that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? And he's one of the most powerful people probably alive today, and he hasn't even done that kind of thing. When people murder in the name of a spirit, it's misguided. I mean, look at the Crusades, for example. You don't murder other people in the name of a spirit. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. I was listening, I was watching that warrior thing on, on uh, Netflix, or no, it's on Sky, that Chinese warrior uh, program. The One of the Chinese died and said the spirit of a million coolies will haunt america <laughs> <laughs> and i thought wow it rings true there's so much torture a, a very, very haunted place it's a, it's a it's a very haunted place i mean a lot of atrocities took place there um a, a lot of atrocities took place. i mean obviously england's not exactly clean as clean as a whistle but a lot of a lot of atrocities took place in america so um it's a, quite a bloodstained place you know against like the native americans and against like in the whole like slavery thing and then there was also the civil war and stuff like that there's a lot of death and dying and, and negative energy in, in that particular land and it was quite a spiritual place to begin with as well so i think the culmination of the spirituality there and the um like constant combat negativity is why it's so such a haunted place i mean england's haunted where i live um near pontifract is have you ever um, seen a film called when the lights went out no Oh, you don't watch ghost films, do you? <laughs> no. Right, well, I live about 10 minutes from the house, yeah, that that is filmed in and based on where this ghost was supposed to have strangled a lady to death. Um, oh, right, cool. Got people go there for ghost stars and stuff. It's, it's inter interesting, like, I, I was just talking to a friend this morning about about places, because I was living in a in a flat, and when I went to look at it, because I'm sensitive, um, there was a couple living in it and the energy in it was like really good it was like moving and I thought wow and I even said to her oh the energy's like really good here and she said she had it feng shui because it was bad when they got there and they paid like 300 yeah. quid to get feng shui and I didn't believe in that stuff anyway they cleared out and I came back and um, it was <laughs> the energy in the place was horrible it was almost like hostile and I yeah. Yeah, I mean, what is that? How can it possibly be that a place is is hostile? It's the flow of the energy in that place and the flow of the energy in the universe. Energy exists in different dimensions, different forms and different spectrums. Um, so the sort of like similar principle to feng shui is basically it's flow energy is flowing all around us. So what they do is they set things up and they set it up in a way that it directs the right flow to attract the right 
energy for the place. So if a place needs more of a loving energy, it'll get more of a loving energy. If it needs more of a protective energy, it'll get more of a protective energy. There are other ways other than feng shui to attract the energies you need. Um, kitchen witches, voodooist haunts like myself, um, and hoodoo practitioners, we grow certain herbs. Um, so like in hanging baskets, things like lavender, for example, lavender attracts love. Um, and things like basil, for example, basil's protective, it cleanses. Um, things like sage, for example, that cleanses. And you don't just have to burn it and waft it around your house. You can grow them outside your house in little herb gardens and stuff like that. And this will attract the correct energies, the right energies to your, um, to your, to your house. Um, some people even talk to the herbs that they grow. Um, because herbs themselves, with them being alive, they possess a spirit. So they address the spirit in the herb. And when they're feeding them, they'll say, I'm offering you some water and some food to attract this energy to my home. Thank you for being here, kind of thing. Uh, when they pick them, they'll explain the magical working they're going to do with them. But you can do all sorts of things to attract the right energies to your house or to remove the wrong energies. Um, Tibetans use an instrument called a singing bowl that works on extremely high frequencies, which is how smudging works as well. Do you know when you burn like frankincense or myrrh or sage, when you're burning it, it lets off, and you might be able to perceive this as a psychic, it lets off incredibly high vibrations. Now, incredibly negative energies are of a low vibration, and they don't like high vibrations, so they go away, which is why um, frankincense and myrrh are incredibly spiritual, and it's why the wise men are supposed to have took it to Jesus, not because of its value, but because of its cleansing potential, because every, and it removes anything negative when it's burnt. Um, this is also why churches were often around in their big um, So there are a lot of ways to attract the right energies to your home. Some people keep stones and stuff. Feng Shui is a good way, though. It's a good way because you're actually using the flow of the energy that's around you, and basically directing the flow of the energy through the house, so it basically does a current of energy, of the right energy through the home. Uh, but you could do a combination of things. You could grow the herbs that manifest the right energy, do the feng shui, which puts it through the home and amplifies it, and then do other methods to keep yourself cleansed and protected. What does the feng shui do? How do they do it? They put up little pictures and all that, don't they? Well, I'm not too versed on feng shui, but it's on energy healing itself and the principle of energy healing I am. And certain sacred symbols basically invoke the universal energy to behave in a certain way, whether that's a cleansing way or a healing way or both. And the universal energy will basically stimulate or cleanse the energy if it's in a place. And if it's in a person, it stimulates their natural healing energies and boosts it up. Um, so... I'm not too versed on feng shui itself, but I do understand it's a way of directing a current of energy through the home. So I'm guessing the symbols represent the kind of energy they need to pull through the home. And then they have to position the furniture and things in a certain way so that they don't obstruct it and cause energetic blockages as well. Oh, I see. Why, um, why would I in this flat feel like it's hostile? What is that, though? I mean, is that an entity or energy blockage? It's like a kind of... I don't want you here kind of a vibe. It's horrible. I actually, when they moved out and I came here to sort of get the keys, I thought, oh, no. I had a feeling of, oh, my God, you know? It was, like, weird. It was, like, I thought, oh, shit. And I tried painting it to change it, but it's been there. I mean, I'm moving tomorrow. It's been there all along, you know? It's it's horrible. It's just hostile. It's, like, I don't, I don't want you here, kind of. Is that an entity? It could, it could, it could be a low-level entity and attracting positive energies. And indeed, the feng shui practitioner may have even put cleansing into it as well. So, uh, and having, having the feng, sh feng shui undone might have removed the level of protection that was there. And obviously, oh. it's, it could potentially be a spirit. But what could have happened as well is it could be a residual energy or a residual spirit. Some spirits are actually consciously there; they're just like on replay. Um, so if something really negative happened into that flat, let's say 30 or 40, 50 years ago, somebody was murdered there, for example, it's just be a bit dramatic with it because we're on radio with it. Somebody was murdered there. Two people were, two people were murdered there by their dog. <laughs> um, and, and this, this obviously stains it. It leaves a lot of, like I was saying about America's a haunted place because there's a lot of negative stuff happened. Well, it stains it um, and it can leave residual energy. A sensitive can pick up on this. Um, you could say if you're sensitive enough, especially a medium, can pick up on accidents because someone's been hurt. 
um, or something like that. So the energy could still be there residually and it might not be a conscious spirit. It might just be a replay or a negative event could have left a cloud, a thick stain of negative energy there. Um, but it could, it sounds more likely to be a, a low level spirit, perhaps somebody that died there that was territorial about there, but isn't necessarily too negative. Because if it was a negative cloud of energy, the feng shui would have cleansed it and removed it all by, in the time that couple was there, because I'm guessing they weren't just there for a couple of days and gone. Oh. Um, um, and if it, it was a residual, it would have been cleansed away by the energy as well. Oh. If it was um, a territorial spirit, say like a sweet old man that died there, but he's a bit cranky and he don't like people in his house, and it's still his house, um, kind of thing, then the feng shui would have pushed him away, and now it's gone. He's like, "Ray, I can go back home now," and it might even be a bit more intense now because you pushed him away. So now he's like, well, it's "My home." Um, but chances are, I mean, that guy, if it, if it, if it is if it is somebody that's attached to that property, either might not be able to be cleansed away from it anyway because of their attachment to it. Um, but with your psychic abilities, you may be able to help them accept that they're dead and move on. And if you're not comfortable doing that, you may be able to get hire a medium to do that. I won't be able to do that myself because I'd have to be there physically. And to get me to come from Yorkshire to London, it would cost you a bomb. Oh. Well, no, I'm leaving here. But it's like a kind of, a, as well as that, it's kind of like a lockdown. Like a, I felt very as if I couldn't do much. I just wanted to lie in bed. Yeah, sometimes it's like the territorial bad negative get out of my house vibe. It's kind of oppressive. Um, the more you do to try and change it and make it positive, the, the more you're making it not like its place. The more it changes, the more peed off it'll get. Um, that's why a lot of a lot of places sometimes when they're haunted don't even stir up until visible changes are made um, because the ghost liked it the way it was. Um, but I mean, it, it seems it seems like it's a haunting. It doesn't seem like it's a malefic spirit. It seems like it's a haunting potentially of somebody who's attached to that property because they were there before. Um, they may have died there, like I said, a sweet old man or something like that, and they're territorial about it. Um, that's what it sounds. It sounds oh, like. I see. Obviously. So, so, so you can't have something like. Oh, sorry. Where the energy is, is locked down. Do you know what I mean? Where energy itself is almost like locked. That doesn't exist. Well, it does. But the fact that a feng shui position practitioner came in and resolved the situation, and it only started again when he left, um, tells me that if it was just like a cloud of residual negative energy then it should have been cleansed and gone by now. Oh, I see. Because obviously what he did cleansed it and pushed it out. So if it was a residual, a residual, um, a residual replay or a, cl or a cloud of negative energy, then it would have been removed and the problem would have ceased completely. Um, it's, it's, it's not that they had certain crystals and certain things placed certain, and they obviously took them with them. And so it kind of made the Feng Shui go back to how it was. Well, you see, the thing is, the principle, the way it's worked is it's cleansed the environment and probably provided them a degree of protection as well as inviting in positive energy. Hence, if it was residual negative energy, it would have been removed by that process. Um, like, picture a cloud of negative energy, like a bad smell, right? Oh. If you open a window and switch on a fan and that bad smell goes out of the window and then you close the window and the bad smell's gone, Mm. Until something causes that smell again, it's gone. Mm. Yeah? Right? So if it was a cloud of negative energy or a residual, then they've blown it out of the window with what they've done. Mm. What it was is, in my opinion, what I think it is, is somebody that's attached to the property that has passed on. And mm. basically, when, when it was being cleansed and protected, they were sort of like sat outside in the car park thinking, I'll get back in. I'll get <laughs> back in. Never, never. They, People get attached to it. I mean, picture this, yeah. It could be a sweet old man, yeah, that lived there with his wife that he's been with for 50 years, yeah. She's passed away. His only memories of her are there with her, and he don't want to move on from it. And he's, and people changing it and being in there and up in his business and up in his house, probably doing his editing. Ghosts are people. They've got emotions. So when the Feng Shui, he went outside, and then when did he come back in again when they left, those people? Yeah, when, it's, when you stopped doing the protection and the cleansing, Obviously, imagine the Feng Shui kicking him, evicting him from his house and building a wall around it. And now, now that now they've gone, 
they've they've opened a hole in the wall and left, and the wall's crumbled down over time, and he's thought, yeah, I can get back in that. Oh, I see. I thought maybe there were certain buildings that were had locked energy or some shit like that. That's not true, no. Well, some buildings are just bad. Some are. There is a, such a lot, such a thing as locked energy. Um, things where extremely negative events happened. A lot of extremely negative events happened. Some are just just fit for tearing down. To be fair, um, it's either the land is stained before the building was built, or the land was stained after the building was built, or both. Because the land was that bad when the building was built, the spirits and all the energies and stuff and anyone who inhabited it went crazy and you know created even more negativity which created even more negativity until eventually it's just a big like i'd say puss ball of negativity on the earth there I, is I, I read once that um online somebody said oh buildings built between 19 something and 90 something are um locked down is that so that's not possible then I wouldn't say all buildings built between those particular days are, because what every building built in those days has had some heinous atrocity happen to it. When I say um, the land stained, I mean like atrocity level, like. Oh sustained. yeah, no, no. He he just I meant, meant um, he just meant that they there was certain that the chai didn't flow around them. Is that rubbish? Oh, that the, the, the energy did, did, didn't flow around them. That the chi didn't flow around them. You can block it and you can flow it and channel it out. And indeed, it is stronger in some places and weaker in other places, is the universal energy. Um, sorry, I thought you meant there were places that had as negative energy locked into them. Um, no, um, there are places, well, you can deflect it, and there are places that obviously you can stop energy coming in. Um, when a lot of magical protections that people do in the forms of aura shield and things will stop most energy coming in, some of them will allow positive energy a lot of them will stop most energy coming in um, so it is possible to do such things but it's also possible to undo it as well uh, so yeah it's weird all, all that stuff um i wanted to um touch on um yahweh um we we spoke about him earlier i didn't I didn't really read well i did read the old testament um in the old days and you know, thought, oh, that's a bad God. That's obviously not creator God. He's a God of love. This is a God who's murdering everybody. And so I, I like everybody else, sort of hated him. And then I had this, um, when I was looking into magic, I read a, a penguin book on magic and it had magic in the Bible. And I kind of read about Yahweh and he seems so magical, especially the where he got Moses to throw the stuff down, turn to a serpent. I just thought, wow, that's just amazing. And I then started to feel a connection with Yahweh and built up a connection where I now, you know, speak to Yahweh on a daily basis and meditate with Yahweh. But a lot of people say, oh, that's Satan you're talking to. And <laughs> what, what's your opinion about Yahweh? Well, no, Yahweh is not Satan. Yahweh is who the Christians term as God, Jehovah, Yahweh. The who dad do you of think? Who, who actually is? Who is he? Um, well, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. I know some people believe he's the creator of uh, of, of, of Earth and of man. Um, in some, in some kind of, I'd say, rare now, rare. What's the word for it now? Strange versions of Vodou. Um, some people perceive him as a lower, so as one of the lower, so a god, but not the god. Um, you know, there's a lot of different opinions as to uh, as to who he is and what he has and what he hasn't done. I don't work with him myself, um, but the Bible itself, the um, old the Old Testament, the Hebraic version, is the closest you're going to get to the original. I mean, it's nowhere near, but it's still the closest you're going to get to the original. And if you can get it translated into English, you can start to see how it was written more like a grimoire and less like a religious textbook. And it only became more of a religious textbook later on when it was proper, used as propaganda. Now, I'm not advocating the magic in there because I don't believe in forcing demonics or any other spirit in the name of anything. Anything I believe in working with them um, in a mutually beneficial arrangement and being fair with them. Um, so I don't advocate any of the magic in it. But the Bible itself it is an incredibly 
magical, powerful talisman. Every voter we saw has a copy. If they, even if they don't read it, they have a copy because it is an incredibly powerful, protective, magical talisman. The Psalms themselves don't just bring, they, they bring changes and magic around and can be used to empower hoodoo and voodoo magic. And the saints themselves that can be co correlated with specific other art and were, uh, all worked with separately to um, work certain voodoo and certain other works as well. For example, Our Lady of Perpetual Help is um, correlated with Azulia Danto. How, have you um, gone there? Sorry, you've gone quiet. Did I go? Uh, sorry, um, but yeah. So I don't really work with them a right lot. Um, but um, like I said, there's there's a lot of different there's a lot of different beliefs as to who he is and what he's done. Uh, like, you like, like, sorry, carry on. You mentioned Moses throwing a staff down and the staff turning into a serpent. You might find this interesting in the C Caribbean, so kind of Jamaican style of voodoo voodoo fair. They use a staff called an obia stick. The obia stick is also called the staff of Moses, um, and snakes are very sacred in the um, obia belief. Sorry, you've gone quiet again, Edward. You keep fading out. That's weird. Sorry, can you not hear me properly? <clears throat> you just fade out now and again, but you're back now. Um, well, this has gone a bit growly. <laughs> no, it's your microphone. It's your microphone. So, um, the staff of Moses. Um, what, what do they call it? Spell it out. O B. Obia. Um, I, oh, are you going to test my spelling skills now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's O B I E. I, I don't think there's a H in it somewhere. Um, I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I don't know how to spell it. But it's Ob. It's called Obia. Oh. Um, and it's like a sort of Caribbean Jamaican version of Vodou, and they use a staff in it called the Staff of Moses. Oh right, and what do they do with it? It's one of their ritualistic tools that they um, use for the work. I don't know because I don't work Obia. You see, the kind of Vodou I learned was more of the Haitian style. We don't use the staff of Moses, but in, like I said, in the Caribbean sort of variation of it, they do use a stick called the staff of Moses. And you mentioned uh, Moses threw his staff down and it turned into a snake. Well, like I said, um, it might interest you to know that in the Obia faith, they use the staff of Moses and snakes are sacred. Oh, that might be my little um, path working for the future. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you have to be black to... to Sometimes you you know you hear about the like Caribbean. Do I have to be black for for that? It's a phallic. Pardon? It's it's a it's a fallacy. The lower themselves don't care what you are. It's what's in your heart. The work you're gonna put in. Are you gonna keep your promises to them and work with them properly and show them the appropriate respect? All that stuff. It's who you are in your heart, not what color you are that matters. Um, some people will say you have to be this, you have to be that, you have to speak this way, you have to walk and dance this way. Um, but I've had three years professional experience now and I've got about eight, out of all the feedback I've had, at least 90% of it has been positive. In some cases, people talk positive, life changing. Uh, so, you know, it shows that my, what I do must work. And I don't, obviously, I'm not of any sort of, um, like Afro sort of did, or um, black or or all like that. Um, I, would, I wouldn't I wouldn't say you do. It's who you are. It's who you are. I think the spirits are open to you. I'm I'm like no, I don't. Well, I mean the lady that taught me, she was taught by Haitians, um, but she's European as well actually. Um, but she was she obviously she was taught by Haitians in Haiti, um, but she's European and she taught me and the spirits don't seem to mind they don't treat me any differently i've got haitian friends that seem that call me brother you know that don't treat me any differently so no it's just a fallacy it's just a fallacy you don't have to be uh black to do voodoo mm. so. so so um sorry my mind went blank i'm hearing a weird noise oh. yeah i heard that in the background i, I thought it was at your end that's why i, I stopped no. it was kind of like noise. a strange feedback sound wasn't it What's that shaking noise? It's I don't know, unless it's my son. It's weird. It's like someone shaking a rattle. Yeah, it's quiet, yeah. 
strange. Um, so the lower, um, are they? Do they stretch over the whole of the land, or are they just in the out in those areas lower? Where do they hang out? Well, um, everywhere, everywhere. They're with us, and they're not. Um, they can be anywhere and everywhere all at once. They're not bound or constrained to any specific like sort of like plane or place or um, like 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 realm. Um, some of them do. They do have home realms. Like for example, the Radaloa, they're in what they call Guinea. Um, the Gede Loa are in the land of the dead. The Gede and the Petro Loa are in the land of the Petro Loa. Um, but they're quite capable of stepping in and out of our reality and our existence whenever they like. They're referred to as having a foot in all wor worlds, and this is through using the crossroads. So this will interest you as somebody who works with Yawa. The crossroads is the way between worlds to everything, and the reason the cross is used as a religious symbol is it's appropriated from craft that use it to represent the crossroads. So another magic symbology linking back to religion that religion took from magic was the use of the cross. Um, and basically it's how you work things to put your intention and will out there so the spirits and the divine can get can get a sort of wind of what you want and how they then come back and help manifest that to happen. Um, so the low are masters of working and traveling on crossroads and they have a foot in all worlds. Oh, I see. Interesting. And so earlier on you were talking about the, um, the was it a banishing ritual you said would open up um, psychic powers? Was that what it was that well, you sent to me? It will clear you. It will, it will clear you a lot, which will open your abilities a lot more. Um, you see, you seem, you're already quite open yourself, but the banishing ritual itself will remove anything negative, anything like clogging you up or, or blocking you psychically or anything that's attached to you. Now, this banishing ritual isn't like the usual hermetic banishing ritual of the pentagram. I've sent you one from, a, from Planetary High Magic, which is the banishing ritual of the Master Key. Um, it's combined with a, a ritual called the Middle Pillar Ritual. And basically, it's a clear all. It basically resets you back to clear, back to everything's all good. You clear, you just normal. Everything's just clear. The other ritual I sent you is magical armor. It's a visualization technique you can do to protect yourself magically using um, planetary high magic again. Yeah, I, I couldn't read that because it's too tiny. It's like you've handwritten it and then I couldn't enlarge it on my screen. I don't know why. Ah, right. Um, yeah, I'll do a typed version. That was a photograph from my notes um, that I just put on my website for people to see. Um, you see, there's actually a video on my website of me performing it with a little talk about it at the end as well. Oh, that would be good. Uh, just, so, just so you know, people had a visual cue to put with the instructions. Um, so I'll type. I'll put. I'll put. A t I'll replace it with a type version because if you're having that issue viewing it, I'm betting that all my other people that have looked at it are having the same sort of issue as well. Yeah, you can't read it, which, which is a shame, isn't it? I wanted to. <laughs> I was trying to, but yeah, I couldn't. Um, so that's interesting. I, I noticed. I, I wanted to just cover. Um, just got another twenty-five minutes left. Um, I wanted to cover about the elite and, and their use of um, magic and this thing about saying, you know, they're Satanists and, you know, people say, you know, Luciferians and stuff like that. I mean, for, for my um, experience of them, I, I used to work for the News of the World and The Sun, as you know, and when I was working for the News of the World prior to the phone hacking, because um, I was also a private detective and... Um, I did become a journalist later on, but I started off with the news world as a private detective and I was hired by a company um, to go along and do a surveillance on someone. So anyway, I went to see it, it was a computer company in Buckingham Gate and um, I brought an ex-army guy with me, um, Mar Martin, a guy I know, and we sat there and they gave us a task and uh, it was to follow a guy and it was a guy, South African, who was doing a, a film so we anyway we did the surveillance but the guy was surveillance um aware so uh, 
we just chased him all over the place, all around Buckingham Palace, all, well, the outside. <coughs> and he ended up jumping on a bus and looking straight at me. It was crazy. Um, but they had where he was going in um, to this place. And they'd had six different agencies on it. And I, they gave it to me to do. And I was one day sitting up the News and World offices. And I kind of had this thought communication um, in my head to ring their offices where this guy was coming in and out and this South African filmmaker and I sort of communicate back to it well why would I why would I do that now you know it's nine o'clock at night I was waiting for somebody to finish off to go and have a drink with them and um, it was persistent so I just picked up the phone and rang those offices and a cleaner picked up and basically told me where this guy was living and who he was living with and so hmm, it was easy to do so I went back to see this computer company and they said, how did you do that? Because nine other agencies didn't do it. And I said, well, actually, you know, I'm a psychic. And um, and then all these men came into the room and um, they said, you know who we are, don't you? And the following week, the army guy said, oh, um, they're MI6. And I thought, well, he's fantasizing. They're not, you know, but turned out they actually were. And CIX Limited, which was their name, was Company X in French. And anyway, they said to me, what? what are the news of the world up to? You know, you work for them. What are they doing? And how much access do they have to the boys in Hereford? And basically, the news of the world were using the SAS and they were out of their pram and they were doing phone hacking. And, you know, um, so I informed this to all these um, characters in the room. A lot of them were ex-anti-terrorist high rollers. Anyway, I expected them to sort of carry on using me. Um, for a long period of time and um, they, they used me a bit and basically then dropped me and as they dropped me I felt a loss of a certain again I felt shut down you know I felt shut down for a while the newspaper obviously news the world crashed and um, but after that 2009 I felt a lot of my ability sort of grounded like really grounded as if um like a plane just you know made to sit on the runway that couldn't fly anywhere and i was wondering pardon oh sorry no no go on carry on i was wondering do those kind of agencies use um black magicians to ground people they don't want to work or i just felt somebody did something to me around then you know certainly wouldn't put it past them um I, oh, I can't say that. Yeah, certainly, I, I certainly wouldn't put it past them. I do know of occasions where certain agencies have gone into programs learning about things like mind control and certain things like that. Um, and then there's certain times when spiritual arts have been investigated and have been used by elites and 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 and, 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 and such places. Um, I wouldn't say they all they all do it and they're all into it. Um, I would say that it is possible, though. Um, myself, I've done work for police officers, um, for people whose family are politicians in other countries and stuff. I can't really name it, and that's about as much as I can say on that. So myself, I've done work for people of that sort of magnitude, and I've done a lot of work for people that have come to me for a specific job, and then I've never heard from them ever again. So, for all you know, that could have been somebody from another, from from an age, from an intelligence agency, for example, saying, "Put a curse on this dude for me. Here's your hundred quid," and then they just disappear and I never hear from him again. Some of these people, their profiles don't even exist anymore. So, do you know what I mean? It is potentially possible. It's not if if we are indeed being worked with ourselves by these um, agencies, we're not aware of it. Um, but it's also possible that these agencies have learned what we have learned in some respects and have done it themselves. I mean, I don't want to bring too much attention to him because um, he was a scumbag, but Adolf Hitler had a spiritual division, did he not, in World War II, trying to work out the spiritual secrets of the world to give him an edge. Um, so, and you mentioned these were MI6. Well, we did sort of, you know, win the war and confiscate a lot of his crap. So, you know, I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's definitely there because I honestly don't know what I say to a lot of conspiracy theories is there are a lot of red herrings out there on purpose. Um, we don't we'll never know people like me and you will never know yet until something actually happens. What what is actually is we will you know what 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 these 
people are doing what these elites are up to. They'll never know. When conspiracy theorists tell me I've researched and I've read this and I've read that, and I'm like, what? So you've researched and read this and read that on online? And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's all online. Look, and they'll give me links. And I'm saying, right, so you're telling me if you were a nefarious, high-profile billionaire public figure, you're going to put all your nefarious stuff on a server that can be accessed by a, uh, on, online? Do you know what I mean? You just said yourself you know about phone hacking and stuff like that. So you know yourself, if you've got any data that's secure, yeah, you're not going to keep it anywhere online, anywhere near a cloud, anywhere near a server that's hooked up to a phone line. Or, oh, yeah, if you've got any secure data, you're going to keep it old school somewhere when it's not hooked up to the damn internet. And these people are trying to say, oh, well, this is what I've researched online and stuff like that. So I do believe it's possible that the occult has been used by the elites, is being used by the elites, and has indeed and is indeed being used by the intelligence agents, things like that. I do believe it's possible, but I don't know whether it's actually being done. I believe it's possible. I don't know whether it's being done. But bear this in mind. All over the world, certain spirits are used by certain security forces for things like protection. For example, certain um, members of the police force in Mexico who take on the drug cartels, some of them have uh, dedications to La Santa Muerte on their uniform, the, go the um, goddess of death. Um, to bless them and protect them. She's especially good at protecting them at night. Um, so, you know, spirits are used and invoked for a number of reasons around the world by a number of agencies, but it might not be the agencies directly, just it depends who in the agency believes what and uses what, doesn't it? I mean, if you're a, a top-level spy and black magic's got you that way, then that's what's happening, but it doesn't necessarily mean your next three colleagues are exactly the same, does it? Yeah, so they could have, I just wondered why, you know, I felt not able to do much after, it's just wearing off now, but for a great number of years, you know, I couldn't even access my own dreams, I just had flat dreams, do you know what I mean, like, sometimes it, it just like, you, you really get out in dreams, don't you, you astrally travel, I wasn't doing that for a great number of years, you know, after that, after that little encounter with those people, and, um, you made me they feel really bad. Your energy. Um, so they can do this by draining your energy. So astrally projecting the ability and the ability to lucid dream and the ability to use your abilities to their full uh, is based on the amount of energy you have in your body and how easily it flows around your body. If they obstruct the way the energy flows around your body, it dampens your abilities. If they drain your energy, it um, then you have basically no fuel to take off your astral projection, to put it in layman's terms. Um, it is technically, technologically possible to create a machine that will drain somebody's life force energy and store it. Um, there are blueprints for it online. The um, gentleman, you're going to laugh at this name, but the gentleman's name is Uncle Chucky. <laughs> um, you mentioned E.A. Coetin earlier. He's in one of the E.A. Coetin books. He wrote an article called A Vampire Is and A Vampire Does. And he has created blueprints for what they call a psionics machine. The psionics machine can take energies from somebody. Um, and if this gentleman managed to create this on his own, then if the gov and he's put the blueprints out there for you to buy. So, you know, imagine what the government could have created if they accessed those blueprints or if they had a team of scientists expand on that. Perhaps they've got a way to pollute people's energies or, or block them completely. I mean, it's perfectly plausible or possible. If somebody who is a black magician and author can create a machine to drain somebody's energy, then it's perfectly plausible that a team of scientists could create one to do X, Y, Z to somebody's energy. Right. So, 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 yeah. So, so, do, do they, if they did do drain my energy, did they use a witch for that or? Well, they don't necessarily have to use a witch. Like I said, it's it's possible to create a machine to do it. Um, but Already, you, yeah, they've got yeah. that machine. Yep, or you can ask a familiar to do it. So you can say to the familiar, listen, I want this person's life force energy. If you take it for me, you can have a certain percentage of what you take. And spirits eat energy. Basically, energy to spirits is like money is to a politician. Do you know what I mean? It's just, just it's the be all and end all of everything. Um, so it's the most valuable commodity in the universe. So if you have a demonic familiar, for example, that's quite dark, or even some lower, for example, um, they, they, they may 
be able to go over and feed on that person's energy and eat that energy and either bring it back to you or just take it as payment for eating that energy. You can psychically link and eat people's energy. Um, I, I, I could, it's possible. Um, I mean, I could probably train you how to do it so that you could eat my energy while you're talking to me right now over the phone. I couldn't train you to do it over the phone right now, but do you know what I mean? It'd be possible because while we're talking, we're linked and we're talking to each other, it'd be possible for you to be able to drain my energy. Um, as a person with, with abilities. So there are many ways they can do it. They didn't just have to hire a witch if they did drain your energy. But there are also things they can do, such as block certain chakras, like your third eye chakra and stuff. What they would do is just send either the wrong colour energy or a murky negative energy to it. Not quite enough to make you sick, to make you notice it was sick, but enough to cloud it so that it's not remembering your dreams and it's not taking you to the astral realm when all of a sudden your empathic senses are, are there. You don't know. How, how people are feeling around you anymore. Or, do you know what I mean? It's possible to do that as well. Um, people do that as, uh, it's called psychically attacking somebody and they feel when you use, it's kind of like doing Reiki in reverse because instead of giving them good energy, you're giving them bad energy and you're clogging a, a specific chakra or all of them up with a negative energy. With you feeling right, being, feeling right grounded and not being able to do anything, they may have even overstimulated your root chakra, which again, all they people to do that is an energy healer. How do they overstimulate? How, how does that work to ground you? Well, you can overactivate and overstimulate somebody's chakra. So the root chakra is the chakra for grounding. Yeah. So if you hit that with too much red energy constantly, 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 constantly grounding that person. So they're just going to be constantly grounded all the time. Like if, if I fill your root chakra up, say, with like, say, uh, red energy for maybe what one or two hour session every day and then don't do any other chakra work and don't do any balancing work so you just basically you just basically be super grounded and probably quite lethargic wow that's really making me cry. <laughs> oh fuck sorry i'm not allowed to swear on air but jesus christ i mean i didn't know any of this i just didn't know any of this this is why energy healers have to go through a certain level of training before they should really be let loose on people's chakras because um, it's not just about filling the chakras up with the right color it's filling them up with the right amounts of the right color and it's not exactly the same amount each time imagine each chakra is a cup and each one's not full but they're all at different levels so you have to then top them up to the right you know what i mean so you have to be, it's a very very careful process and it usually requires a lot of balancing and stuff there's energy healing and stuff like that otherwise you can do like such things i described to you by accident to somebody um this is why it usually takes a, a, a year or two to become a, a qualified like level three reiki master although if, i look if, 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 if sometimes i look at my root tracker that's the one at the back isn't it the the red one um down near your Lady bits. Yeah, sort of just above the, the bum on the back, is it? Back row? It's kind of in between your bum and your lady bits. Yeah, I know it's mine. It always seems full of, like, and this is horrid to say, yellow pus when I look at it. It's like sort of yellow pus. And I try and clean it out and then go back, and it's there again. What could that be? Negative energy from um, either negative encounters you've had through the day um, or negative spiritual energies or things like that. Um, you can clean your chakras every day. That's that's brilliant. You can do chakra balancing meditations as well to keep them balanced and things like that. But um, when we have encounters with people, we take on some of their energy. So if you have a negative encounter with somebody, you take on some of their negative energy. Um, so... Unfortunately, it happens. Um, if somebody's a really negative person, then indeed you can pick up quite a lot of negative energy. Um, there are quite a few sensitives that can't stand being around specific people because of the energies that they put out. And that's um, not because they're a bad person. That's because they're absorbing that negativity off that person. It's making them feel a bit ill. Um, it's kind of the manifestation of that. So you've probably either had negative encounters with somebody or somebody has pushed negative energy onto you in some way. And it's manifesting in your chakras as pugs because that's what you see as a unhealthy kind of thing. Oh, I see. Well, my mother, I was adopted and my father was sexually abusive. He f and when he wasn't sexually abusing me, he found me attractive. And my mother was like quite childish and 
very jealous. So she was very much homing in on my sexual energy with a negative kind of hate, you know? Yeah, so she could, she, it could be a result of targeting from that. Um, the, the banishing ritual will be good for helping that, but the mojo mirror will reflect that intent back on her. Um, she might get quite sick, actually. The working she's, that I she's did, dead now. Ah, um, well, she might not be very comfortable. Because anyway, the, um, I'm sorry to hear about that anyway. Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm not. Obviously, she was my tormentor. I was like, thank God she's dead. But I did find that other women around me, like as some in the truth of it, started targeting me, like in that same way with a, you're evil, you're evil, you're evil. As far as I know, I'm not evil. I don't wish bad on anybody. Yes, I did study those two serial killers, but it was just for, um, you know, because of the spiritual side, but they're out there smearing me as evil, which is the same as my mother did. She was always telling people around, and they're busy telling people around, oh, she's evil, she's evil, she's evil, you know? So it's like the baton was passed, you know? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm fully, I'm fully uh, aware of that particular stigma. My voodoo name, Papa Smoke, was given to me by the lady that taught me voodoo, Mama Midnight. And smoke is kind of a Haitian slang for trouble. Because when I started working in voodoo, I was attacked and challenged a lot. So I had to basically fight my way to survival. So I know what being uh, tarred with a, a negative brush is like. Because obviously I am Papa Smoke, basically. Papa Trouble. That's all I get these days. Well, it's not all I get these days. Actually, it's calmed down a lot these days now. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've been there all the time. Uh, people used to be like, oh, it's all about money. He's, 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 he's this, he's that, he's fake, he's a con, he's a scam. So then, um, obviously, I started putting my reviews about so people could see that it wasn't fake. Um, I started working with a Haitian charity, um, supporting a Haitian charity. Um, I sell their art for them, and any any work that's from Voodoo, so root works on my website, or any work that's to do with Voodoo, I sell, I give them a donation from it as well, um, just to go out and show the people that that's not what I'm about. I'm actually about being spiritual. So that. Is, 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 that a, is that a targeting by a certain spirit? It feels kind of, feels like a certain spirit in some kind of way. It does. It might be a targeting by, um, it sounds like she, she's basically put a lot of negative energy and a lot of hate into it. She might have potentially had work done to you to affect that particular area. Um, and other people, when they're picking up on that energy, they're picking up on that as a weak spot, so that's where they attack as well. Um, these, this is all possible, um, but with, like I said, with the work that's been done, you'll notice this will cease. Um, like I said, the shockwave has gone through the energy field and this will start to cease. I would recommend though, still healing yourself psychically because the more you heal yourself, the stronger you become at healing and the more confident you'll become in yourself as you see yourself progressing. Um, the other things that are taking place, you'll start to see changes in things. Um, it should be undone now, though, because I know Saoirse's also done a protection as well, Saoirse Lunarius. Um, she, there was more than one person contracted to do this, you see. Um, so I know Saoirse Lunarius has done a uh, protection and some work on you as well. So you yeah, well, start to see I, Yeah, so thank you. And I, I want to devote the show to Omar, who paid um, both you and Saoirse. It was really nice of him. And he saw my life was in difficulty, so he, he stepped up and did that. And so um, all praise and, and thank you. And how, how do you um, clean your chakras daily and heal them and sort of have that spiritual um, cleanliness? Well, eventually you'll be able to do it by yourself. But until you can, what you can do is go on YouTube and type in, um, I learn on the one called 10 Minute Chakras. And it's a 10 minute guided meditation and it basically fills your chakras with the balanced colors for each chakra so that you can balance it and this will help you keep cleansed and keep balanced um if you want to go towards a more darker sort of like three a demonic side there is on my youtube channel a video of empowering your chakras and melting them using the inferno energy of the abyss based on a teaching from an author friend of mine called Curtis Joseph. This is still chakra work and it still cleanses and empowers you, but this is a different energy. Instead of the universal energy, this is the inferno energy of the abyss. Um, so depending on which current you want to use would depend on which video. 
But for yourself, I would recommend the 10 minute chakras for the orange. Okay, excellent. And that will, if somebody's sending you too much red for your root chakra and grounding you, or if somebody's eating you, will that stop them from eating you? It'll balance. It'll balance you, but it won't stop them from eating you. You need to protect yourself to stop them from eating you. To do that, you need you can at the minimum create something like an aura shield. Um, there are guided meditations again on YouTube to create an aura shield. Um, the one I listen to is called the Triple Shield. Um, you'll see it when you search it on YouTube. I can't remember who it's by. Um, I think is it. No, I don't think it's Scott Noble. Um, but you'll see it's a picture, right? And it's like a, a, a shadow man and all the colour of the chakras going up him and he's in a little multicoloured bubble. And it's called the uh, the triple shield. That's that's quite a good way because that shield doesn't just reflect negativity spiritually, astrally and physically. It actually transmutes the area around you as well to stop negative energies affecting you. And it's called the triple, the triple shield? Triple. Triple shield, yeah, because it's, it's three shields basically. Um, three different colours. One protects you spiritually, one protects you physically, and one protects you astrally. So you on on all planes, you're protected from this energy. And and is that all you do to stop people from eating you? And you do that daily? Well, this 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 certainly helps a lot because it'll certainly make you a harder task to eat. But to be honest, it did. Whatever protection you've got in place, there's always a way around it. People who are trying to link to you to drain you as well will also start to feel lethargic and drained and negative as the Mojo Mirror will see that they only get your negative energy and not your positive energy. So they'll only, through the protection work I did, they will only get the energy you could do with letting go of anyway. Oh, I see, I see. Gosh, there's all this going on and some of us don't know about it and others of us do it not fair really on the people that don't know about it is it well some don't want to know about it some don't believe in it some even scoff at it and laugh at it somebody once um like well if it were i think it was two weeks ago they tried to mock me they went i want you to do can you do magic is it real and i sent them my reviews and they, they said they, ten minutes later they come back and went oh i read those reviews they're brilliant can you transform me into a flying pig and i thought <laughs> oh I, I get to kill does my magic work oh when pigs fly well, yeah, that's, I got the joke. I actually used to chuckle to myself about it. He got me, you know, but it was like, can you turn me into a flying pig? Oh, I get it. Does you, your magic work when pigs fly? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're coming to the end of the show. I can feel them. I can hear them playing the music. Um, so I'm going to do links below um, where people can get hold of you and your website and um, Welcome to Revolution Radio where you, the listeners, are you very much, Edward. It's been really enlightening and the two hours have just flown by. Yeah, I, I, I felt that as well. Thank you. It's been an impression, Sean. Thank you for the opportunity to get heard out there. Revolution Radio. Yeah, excellent. Never I feel sleeps. really informed. Revolution Radio is well done. Died. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Revolution Radio uh, that was Edward. And we're going to pop a smoke and I'll put links below where you can get hold of him. And I've really enjoyed the show and I hope you have a really good week. And to you to donate and support this station and its expenses. You can support us in many available options like archive subscriptions, our seed pack selections, or even my woodworking store. And we also even have Revolution Radio's swag at the Revolution Radio Zazzle store, which you can get t shirts, coffee cups, even a baby onesie. Or you can just plain donate to the cause. We cannot continue without your support and your support is what helps pay the bills. So please, if you wish us to continue, please stop by our station support page and drop a dime on us. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Enter into a world unseen on Raven Star's Witching Hour. 
You will encounter eclectic topics from the realm of spirit brought into our matrix of truth. With your host, the Solaris Blue Raven, Solaris will bring you an array of unique guests covering topics from ghostly spirits to amazing anomalies, covert technology, UFOs, and shadowy global events. And that's right here at Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com, Saturdays, midnight till 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. 